When Merseyside police investigated the killing of three little girls at a summer holiday Taylor Swift dance class, they said it was not a terrorist attack. But today, exactly three whole months later, they announced the suspect, Axel Rudakubana, is to be charged with a separate terror offence. They subsequently discovered a version of an Al-Qaeda training manual on his phone, though they insisted today the Southport attack itself is still not being treated as terrorism. They also found a substance later identified as the poison ricin at his home in the days after the attack, while riots based on misinformation about Rudakubana were breaking out across England. He's due in court in London tomorrow. Downing Street said it had nothing to do with the timing of the charge. It was a matter for the Crown Prosecution Service. Already charged with the murders of three young girls, Axel Rudakabana is now accused of the production of a biological toxin and possession of a military study of an Al-Qaeda training manual. The developments were announced this afternoon at a press conference held by Merseyside Police. I recognise that these new charges may lead to speculation. I would strongly advise anyone against speculating as to the motivation in this case. The criminal proceedings against Axel Rudkabana are live and he has a right to a fair trial. It is exactly three months since Alice de Silva Aguiar, B.B. King and Elsie Dot Stankham were stabbed at a summer holiday dance class in Southport. Eight other children and their two teachers were also attacked. This footage, gained by ITV News, shows Axel Rudakabana shortly before the stabbings, pacing outside his home, having just called a taxi. Inside the house, a download of military studies in the jihad against the tyrants was found on his computer, resulting in a terror charge. But this has not been classed as a terrorist incident. For that, a motive of terrorism must be established. Also inside the home was ricin, found by officers two days after the attacks. Although ricin is a highly toxic chemical poison, Merseyside Police was at pains to point out that the risk to the public at the time was low to very low and no traces of ricin was found at the dance workshop targeted on the 29th of July. The UK Health Security Agency today moved to reassure the public. I would like to emphasise that there has been no evidence of ricin poisoning in anyone involved in or connected to this incident. Most people who have ricin poisoning will develop symptoms within 24 hours, with some <coughs> symptoms starting even earlier. These developments are likely to rock the community of Southport, already shattered by what took place there this summer. Axel Rudakabana will make his second court appearance at Westminster Magistrates tomorrow. Rachel Townsend, News at 10, Liverpool. Well, to talk about these developments, our UK editor, Paul Brand, joins us now. Paul, it's highly unusual for the police to make a statement like this. What can you tell us about the timing? I think given that the police previously said that terrorism wasn't a factor in this case, they know that they have to explain the nuance of all of it, even though it's quite difficult, it's very difficult for us tonight, for example, to talk about this, because of the risk of prejudicing the trial of Axel Rudakabana. And, and obviously we don't want to do that, not least of all for the families of the three girls who died. Nevertheless, police have made this distinction between the fact that even just having an Al-Qaeda manual is a terror offence, and in this case they uh, accuse Axel Rudakabana of that offence, they found one, uh, they say, on his phone. But then it's a leap to then say that the stabbings in Southport were inspired by terrorism. That would require a motive to be established. Police say there isn't a motive that they can see here uh, of terrorism. And counter-terrorism police in the Met as well have come to the same conclusion as Mer Merseyside police. Nevertheless, nevertheless, police and uh, sources in the Home Office tonight say to me that they are acutely aware of the sensitivities around all of this, given the riots that took place in August. And already tonight, others are drawing different conclusions. We've got the two contenders for the leadership of the Conservative Party, both asking who knew what when, was information somehow withheld from the public for other reasons. Uh, they, they're, a lot of them, uh, of these critics, are aiming their fire at the Prime Minister, actually, but I don't think we're going to hear anything from him, not least of all because he's a, a lawyer himself. He knows he can't really get into a discussion around all of this. Both he and his Home Secretary are saying, wait till the trial in January. Hopefully the details will become clearer then. OK, Paul, thank you very much indeed for that. Thank you.